welcome in everybody this is radio dario we are kicking it off with our episode number 10 so for the 10th episode we're gonna try something a little bit different i'm working on a new format so we ain't got everything quite all set up quite yet uh but we're gonna try to cram everything in the 10 minutes and we're just gonna go with some topics that are on my brain tonight after watching the football games today and things i want to talk about uh from what i've seen this week in the nfl and then also whatever else comes to mind uh so we're gonna jump off here we're gonna start the timer try to keep everything within 10 minutes but i want to start off by talking about Kadarius tony who came in and had several great plays uh to help the chiefs this week against the jaguars uh one of the plays that i want to key in more specifically is i've never seen anybody adjust their gloves before going up and making a snag uh but let's go ahead and jump right into the video and uh let's talk about it all right so as you can see here we get to see Kadarius tony get his first nfl career touchdown i mean that's kind of crazy as dynamic of a player as he is it just didn't happen with the Giants. He couldn't get in the end zone with the Giants receiving a touchdown. But we got him his first NFL career touchdown here with the Chiefs. And I love it. I love it so much. We got to see him be, look at that stiff arm. We got to see him be dynamic in so many ways this game. He was able to get some jet sweeps. Uh, with McCole Harmon being out due to injury, it really gave Kadarius Tony a chance to step up and show what he can do. And I'm really impressed with his grasp of the playbook in three weeks of with being with the Chiefs. Hold on, wait, let's see that again. That was it, when he went up and caught it on two people. Watch, he, he just adjusted his gloves. Before he went up and got it, he adjusted his gloves. Like, oh, I'm about to go get this. Oh man, that was incredible, incredible. I absolutely loved what we saw in the Kadarius Tony today. Absolutely, absolutely loved it. I tried to hit pause. Absolutely loved what we saw out of Kadarius Tony today, uh, but Going into what I thought this man could be for the Chiefs, it's exactly that. It's exactly what we've been seeing from him. And I know I've been gone for a couple of weeks here. Uh, speaking of which, my hiatus, uh, we gave birth to my daughter. Uh, so that's really exciting news, but uh, we're trying to get back in the swing of things. I want to try some different things with the format and the setup, uh, just to try to give it a little bit different change. So that's why, and also I got tired of people saying that the setup looked like PTI. I love PTI as a show, but I don't want to be compared to them. I mean, that's obviously what I kind of got the inspiration from. But I want to try to create something new, refreshing, and our own. Uh, strictly that you associate Radio Dario with. So uh, that's what I wanted to talk about with Kadarius Tony. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about that hit Juju Smith-Schuster took. Now, when we talk about what the NFL is doing, it's all about player safety. And this hit I think falls in the realm of what we talk about when it comes to player safety. Now I'm gonna play it and we're gonna discuss it a little bit here. So queuing up the video, as you can see, Mahomes throws it, Juju catches it, and then he gets hit and immediately goes into what I call limp mode. Then there's a flag thrown, but what you guys don't see here is the refs then came back and picked up the foul, picked up the flag. They picked up the flag and said, there is no penalty for personal foul. And we've all, we all just saw it right there. He went limp from that hit. It was a head to head hit. We gotta get better in the NFL at taking care of our players for player safety. And what's even more frustrating about that after they picked up that flag is MVS then took a similar shot right after. Right after he took a similar shot. In fact, let's play a little bit of uh, MVS. I'm gonna pause it, I'm gonna pause the timer 
because I don't want this to cut into my talking time. But I want you guys to see what's going on here. I'm standing right in front of him. Um, and, you know, th those, those kind of hits are, you know, not welcome in this game, man, because, you know, we are all are playing, you know, and, and putting our lives on the line, you know, every single play. And you never want to see a guy go down like that. Um, and then for me to come in and get pause. Listen to what he's saying, but them, them earrings he got on are fresh. Them MVS earrings, the mugs are cold. Same kind of hit two plays later, and there's no no flag, no penalty. You know, you know, are they protecting us? You know, that if you listen closely to what he just said, are they protecting us? It's ironic. It was the same exact player that hit Juju. Then a couple plays later. Hit MVS the same exact way towards the head. And there was no penalty on either one. No penalty on either one. So all that does is further incentivize that player like, well, obviously this is a legal hit. So I'm going to keep hitting people this way. But if you would have gave him a penalty, that second hit would have got him tossed out of the game. And that and players do respond when you 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 impact their pockets. If you toss him out the game for that, he's going to learn because he's hurting his team. And giving up them yards is hurting your team. They're going to learn. But by not by not giving a flag or a penalty, he's going to probably go and hit somebody like that next week. He's probably been hitting people like that all year. I don't know. But you, you got you to gotta correct it. When you see it, you got to correct it. You got to hold them accountable when you see things like that. Let's listen to a little bit more of what MVS got to say. We ain't got to watch the whole clip, but let's just see what else he has to say. Because, you know, as a, as a wide out, there's not many things that we can do uh, when the ball's in the air you know, to protect ourselves. And we got two guys go down the same type of injury, um, you know, within three plays. Uh, it's, it's not fair to, to the guys who put their lives on the line. Uh, I was surprised that they didn't throw one on Juju, and I'm surprised that, you know, there was no flag thrown on, on mine as well. Um, because, I mean, that's what the emphasis is, is protection um, of, of players, you know, so we got to do that. And, you know, we, we can't have, you know, two hits like that, you know, with the, the helmet to helmet. Obviously, you know, the game of football is a very violent sport, and we understand that there's going to be hits that are legal um, that we understand, but we can't have the, the head injuries because we see what happens, you know, to, to players who have those head injuries down the road and, and how it affects them. Honestly. Just going into that, you see Juju's, I, I agree with everything MVS had to say. If you're going to protect the players, you got to be consistent and you got to make sure that we're, that's what we're doing is we're trying to protect the players. We have to do that. When you, you, when you don't make calls like that, it does make those players question things. It does. It absolutely does. But I'm not going to sit here and talk about the Chiefs the whole entire time. Let's go ahead and get that clock rolling again. Uh, now I want to kind of touch on... Um, I want to touch on this catch that was done in the Bills-Vikings game. My goodness. We had this game going on at the same time as the Chiefs game because we wanted to see... Uh, it was a chance that the Chiefs could end up taking the number one seed and be sitting number one atop of the AFC so we wanted to keep a close eye on that game and it wasn't looking good there at first I believe the score was like 27-17 in the fourth quarter and uh, Vikings were able to come down and score then it was 27-23 and then that's when we saw the catch of the year let me play it for you guys in case you missed it here it is catch of the year you have and, and I'm going to go ahead and say it now. This guy, when it comes to catching the ball, running routes, and playing the overall position of a wide receiver, he might be the best receiver in the NFL. Let's see this. So Kirk Cousins gets that pressure, throws it up. Look at that. Look at that. It looks like the Bills DB has made the full play on the ball 
and there's no way this man should be able to come up with this catch. But he, in fact, does come up with the catch. Doesn't drop it when he hits the ground. It's incredible. And this whole entire sequence of this game was incredible. The back and forth between the Bills and the Vikings, it was a great game. It was a great game, and I can't hate on it. As much as I like to throw jabs at Josh Allen, this Vikings-Bills game was a great game. We saw, uh, it, I, and correct me if I'm saying it wrong, Jay Jeetis, is that how you say it? We saw him make one of the greatest catches we've seen in a long time. And honestly, watching that whole entire fourth quarter and just seeing the throws that were thrown to him, he was catching everything that was thrown his way. Contested, pass interference, on the sideline. He was catching everything. Everything. Didn't drop one single pass. It got me to the point where it was like, hey, if it's in his vicinity, it's his. You got to give that man the ball, which is what I even argued down the stretch there where they ran several plays and couldn't get in the end zone. I was like, man, just throw it up to Justin Jefferson and see what happens. And then they did the QB sneak and didn't get it. And I was like, oh, shoot. Game's over. Game's over. There's only 44 seconds left. Game's over. There's nothing else that they can do. Then they gave it up. The Bills are going to go kill the, kill the clock and win because all they have is one timeout. There's no way they can win. But as soon as I'm thinking like that, I'm, the Bills get the ball at the one, and I initially don't know what's going on here. Josh Allen hikes the ball and – I'm like, what, what, wait, what happened? What happened? My uncle and my brother are right next to me, and they was like, I don't think he ever had the ball. I'm like, how did he never have the ball? How did he never have the ball? And they showed the replay, and he never had the ball. When they hiked the ball, it, he never secured it cleanly off from behind the center. I was like, what did they do, quarterback sneak? What, what is it? But no, he never had the ball. It dropped right away. And the Vikings came away with it. It was insane. They scored a touchdown off of that. They scored a touchdown off of that. Look at this. He never secured the ball. Goes down. Touchdown. Vikings win. It was incredible. I've never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. And at this point, like Kyle was just like, oh, game's over. Game's over. Now I'm doing it the opposite way for the Vikings. Game's over. Bills don't stand a chance. And what ends up happening after that is the Bills go down and they get three points on a field goal. And I'm like, what is going on? This was a really great game. They ended up kicking it in the overtime. We get to overtime. Vikings go down. They get ball first. They get a field goal, which is frustrating because I'm like, all right, Josh Allen's going to come down and get a touchdown and win this game. There goes the Chiefs' hopes of being the number one seed, like taking the throne at number one. But what Nick Wright has been saying recently about Josh Allen and his turnover, how he's turning the ball over, that's exactly what he does. He goes down and he throws an interception to Patrick Peterson after they were in field goal range and in position to win that game. He... Threw it right to Patrick Peterson. Game over. I think Nick Wright is think Nick Wright is right on the right on the point, right on the mark with Josh Allen lately. And as far as MVP conversation, after the past two weeks, Josh Allen's not in it. He's not. In fact, it's Patrick Mahomes number one, Jalen Hurts number two. I put Tyreek Hill at number three because he's having an unprecedented season at the wide receiver position. And after seeing tonight's game, Justin Jefferson, the way he was catching passes up there, he might need to be in that conversation. Because I was wondering, how are the, how the Vikings 7-1? I know Kirk Cousins ain't like that. I mean, he's solid, but he's not like that. But he got Justin Jefferson. He is like that. When you got a target like that that you can throw it to and make ridiculous catches like what we saw. For the catch of the year? Are you kidding me? Stop it. And um, and I, I'm going to get serious here for a second. Don't ever mention Josh Allen in the same conversation with my quarterback again. Patrick Mahomes. Don't, don't, don't compare him. 
They're not the same. I don't even know what... Alright, now nah, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't even know if I'm going to even uh, put Josh Allen in the conversation. Nah, that's that. Josh Allen's a good quarterback. He's a good quarterback. But he's not on Mahomes' level. He hasn't won an MVP like Mahomes. He hasn't had the season Mahomes has had. And he hasn't won a Super Bowl. So when you look at that, one of these things is not like the other. They're not comparable. Stop it. He's not even in the MVP conversation with Mahomes this year anymore. It's done. Pack him up. Now, it looks like we're out of time, but I still want to talk about other things. Uh, one, I want to talk about Baker Mayfield. Like, what's going on, man? We talked about it at the beginning of the year. Sam Donald or Baker Mayfield. What's going to go on? What's going to happen? Yada, yada, yada. And Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield gets pulled in that Thursday night game. It, I don't know. He's done. I mean, number one overall pick. The Browns moved on from him. He goes to the Panthers. He gets that starting job. And I don't know that he'll be in a Panthers uniform next year. I don't know where Baker Mayfield lands from here. Maybe maybe he's a backup. You have a wonderful career as a backup. Look at Chase Daniels. Chase Daniels has been a backup for a long time. He's a backup for the Saints, backup for us. He's backed up so many different teams. But he's been with he's been in the NFL for a long time and has been a solid backup. And maybe that's where Baker Mayfield needs to be. And if I look at some of the stats, if I remember correctly, Baker Mayfield had a great college stat statistics, and so did Chase Daniels. That's where Baker Mayfield probably needs to be at this point. He's not a starting NFL quarterback. I hate to say it. Or maybe he needs to go sit behind somebody for a couple of years. Get it together. Let the critics write about him. Don't write back. Isn't that what Geno Smith said? And look at Geno Smith. He's having an incredible year. An incredible year. I love what I'm seeing out of Geno. I still don't want him to be my quarterback. Oh, my goodness. That was <laughs> that was a fear of mine. Because that year, they talked about the Chiefs drafting Geno Smith. Uh, to be our quarterback, and I was terrified that we were. Because I, I was never a believer in Geno Smith. Uh, but uh, going into some of the other things we saw, that Packers-Cowboys game, come on, Cowboys. I'm not a Cowboys fan, but you let me down. You had them right where you wanted. You had, you had, they were up 28-14. Aaron Rodgers was done. Get them out of here. Pack them up. Pack the Packers up. They're done. Move them. Go. You had them right where you want them. And you let them off the hook. He talked all that crap all week how he has the Cowboys numbers. And apparently, he does. Because who, who came away with that win? Aaron Rodgers did. Aaron Rodgers came away with the win. And he shouldn't have. Honestly, No. Cowboys, that was your guys' game. And now you guys sit third in your uh, division behind the Giants and the Eagles because you let the Packers off the hook. And now the Packers feel like they got hope to finish off the season and possibly make the playoffs. But you could have put them to bed, put them away, and be done with them. But like Aaron Rodgers said, he had the Cowboys number. And apparently it's the truth. Beating them in overtime. That was tough to watch. Because I was pulling for you, Cowboys. And y'all let me down. Derek Carr. I understand you're frustrated. It sucks. You came in the league. And you started off pretty well with the Raiders. You and a little Amari Cooper. Y'all started developing something there. And unfortunately for you... Long comes Alex Smith, then along comes Patrick Mahomes, dominating the division, AFC West. The Chiefs own the AFC West. Hold on, wait. Did I mention this? With us, if we win out and we continue to stay in the position that we're in, to finish first in the AFC, the AFC Championship game can be hosted in Arrowhead Stadium for the fifth consecutive year in a row? Are we serious? 
I mean, can I get a how about them Chiefs right there for that one? Five years in a row? Stop playing with me. If I was doing a song of the week, stop playing with me. The thing that comes to mind is that uh, Jackie by Boss and J. Cole. You see the drops? Top. Stop playing with me. That's how I feel right now. In five years in a row, stop playing with us. Stop playing with us. But yeah, no, seriously though, it, it's kind of tough to watch. You see an athlete go up there and try to save face for what they've seen this season. They've lost so many games by one score that it's crazy. I was always told growing up that if you're losing a game by a point or one score or whatever, then you're losing that game because of coaching. And I've heard a lot of people talk about how Josh McDaniels is this brilliant mind, how all the things he did with the Patriots. He had a couple of good years with Broncos, and I've heard Bronco players talk about how successful if they follow Josh McDaniels said exactly they would win. And da -da -da. Look, I get it. That sounds all nice and dandy. Yeah, I think he's a smart guy. Probably smarter than I'll ever be. No, actually, I take that back. I'm, I'll probably run laps around him. I'll probably run laps around him. I'm, I won't give him that. I won't give him smarter than me. But, hey, I'll give him he's probably a smart guy. But, just like with the Broncos, and just like now, I don't think he's a head coach. He hasn't been successful with it. And maybe he needs a couple of years to really figure it out. But it's really hard to see all the things the Raiders had going on last year with Henry Ruggs, with emails, with John Gruden. You had all that going on, and the interim head coach came in and rallied those guys to make the playoffs. And you add Devontae Adams, Mr. Get Beat Him Off the Line, Devontae, Mr. Beat Him Off the Line, Adams, and you don't, you don't improve. You're two and seven. I'm just saying, at this present moment, I don't think Josh McDaniels is the answer. And Derek Carr, I think Derek Carr is an okay quarterback, but he lacks the ability to take risk. I've seen a lot of games where they settle for field goals and that's a big reason why they didn't win but i've seen the raiders play several times this year my best friend is a raiders fan which is ridiculous how you a raiders fan and you live in kansas city you gotta rep where you stay but hey i ain't gonna go into all that but there's just several things that the raiders just don't do well they're not a good football team they don't capitalize in the red zone. And honestly, I could care less that they're losing because, <laughs> hey, if it comes between the Raiders, Broncos, and Chargers, I probably hate the Raiders the most. Probably. Then it's the Broncos, and then I probably hate the Chargers the least because, I don't know, the Chargers just feel like non-factors to me. They've always felt that way to me. And then Broncos... I think a big part of my hatred for the Broncos was that they beat us a lot back in the day. They beat us a lot, and then they got Peyton Manny, which we lost to Peyton Manny a lot when he was with the Colts, and, Colts, and then we lost him a lot with the Broncos. So that a lot of my hatred for the I, I might hate the Broncos more than I hate the Raiders, honestly. Like I, it took me a long time to actually listen to Undisputed because I didn't like Shannon Sharp because he was a Bronco. Like, that was really hard for me to get over. But I've, I've elapsed my time by a lot. I just want to touch on a few highlights because my man, I see my man Nick Wright is tweeting out stuff. So let's uh let's see what he has to say about Josh Allen here. So Nick Wright tweeted out, Josh Allen's NFL career. Year one, bust, question mark. Year two, improvement. Year three, huge leap. MVP candidate losing the AFC Championship game to the GOAT, Patrick Mahomes. Year four, MVP hype, mediocre regular season, 
two great playoff games, and then loses in round two to Patrick Mahomes. Year five, MVP and Super Bowl hype. Leads NFL in interceptions and is third in the AFC East. Golly, they fell to third in the AFC League East with that loss. Not looking too good. Not looking too good, Josh Allen. I'm actually I'm I'm watching I'm watching uh first things first. Nick Wright representing the city, you know, I'm, I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. Let's see what Stephen A had to say here. Michael Irvin, if Justin Jefferson ain't at the top of the playmakers list, then you'll need to rename it something else. And Stephen A. Smith better have them in the A list as well. Ooh, we talk about them Vikings, but ultimately here, Josh Allen has always been overrated. Overrated. Justin Herbert is overrated to me. There's a lot of these guys out here that are overrated and that are compared to Mahomes way too much. But hey, ultimately. Ultimately, more than anything, which the Chargers lost. I didn't even get to see who finished that game because I wanted to come down here and shoot this. Justin Herbert overrated. But ultimately, thank you guys so much for tuning in and rocking with me. Like I said, we're going to play around with some editing of this. I kind of really like this background that I got online. Uh, of Kansas City because it represents my city and I really want to make sure I'm holding it down for the city as I do things here but I'm not just keyed into just talking about our city but you're probably going to hear me talk about our city the most when it comes to sports teams if we had an NBA team I'd probably be a season ticket holder for that uh, because basketball is my first love over everything uh, but thank you guys so much for tuning in with me and rocking out we're going to keep rolling this. Eventually, the goal is to be able to get enough uh, viewership and participation here where we can start going live once a week and do a whole rundown and the show be predicated based around what you guys want to talk about and a little bit of back and forth. But thanks, thanks, thanks again. And hit that like button and you better subscribe. Peace.